maybe so. So chapter one, research, development, uh, public health, we all have a responsibility. I know that probably, I think Wolf's the only one that I know of that's going into probably EMS, but you have a responsibility as a healthcare provider, one, education, public awareness, these, these different things, right? So it's just not all taking care of patients and giving medications at certain levels and doing that. There's, there's more to it. I don't think anybody, and we'll watch the video, we'll watch a couple of them in here. I don't think anybody should get to an EMT class without watching the show Emergency. Have you ever heard of it? Yeah, I know you have, yeah, your dad. But Emergency is a show that they did back in the 70s. It was on prime time. And uh, it, it taught about the evolution of EMS. And it, it was there at the first, it was quite realistic. And then, of course, like every medical show, they put drama in it and it gets a little bit less. But uh, it cracks me up to watch it now because, one, I mean, I, I really like the show, but it cracks me up because I go back and I look at all the things. I mean, most of the things on the show we don't do anymore. Most of the things on that they did on the show actually killed the patient instead of helping them. I mean, they lived on TV because we want happy endings, okay? But most of the things they would have done on that show would have killed the patient more than likely. Uh, so it, it's funny to go and watch the mistakes and then also sort of watch the evolution on how that happened, okay? The thing with emergency medical uh, you know what EMS stands for, right? We have to get the definition down for sure. I, I would emergency, 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 since, I don't know, you know, the, I mean, we're talking about the 60s time frame. I mean, I was a wee lad in the 60s. So, I mean, that, that sort of time frame, they started out in EMS. And now all we know really is uh, that if I pick up the phone and dial 911, I'm going to get help, right? Before that, that wasn't the case. At all. And that's sort of some of the things that we looked at. Uh, EMS does make a difference. EMTs at the basic level make a huge difference. Okay? You know, you don't want to go to the Hallmark card and, and get over dramatic with it. But EMTs are going to, I mean, they save lives. So, in the business of saving lives in an unstable environment, uh, cars that are wrecked, like the picture here, right? They're there trying to get this person out of the car. They're, they're, they make a huge difference. EMS personnel sort of like living on the edge, you know? They like the, the adrenaline rush that they get. They like the unstable environment. But before, they didn't have this adequate access to it. You just couldn't pick up the phone and dial 911 and, and, and expect an ambulance. So that's, the, that's sort of the process that we're stepped through. I think the history here is absolutely hilarious because back way, way back in the day, and the date's not really that important, but way back in the day, all the ambulance services run by funeral homes. And they rushed to get to the accident, not to help the patient necessarily, but to what? Pick up the bone. Transport them. Hopefully they get some service, some business. They get there and the bodies are, I mean, there's the person's already dead. Hey, they just load them in their hearse and take them to the funeral home. It was a rush. It was a rush going there. There's all kinds of changes in EMS and regulations now and, and different things. But one thing that we learn from, like we do every time, the Iraqi war, we learned a lot of pre-hospital medicine things to do, like the tourniquet. You know, before the turn, when, when you when you placed a tourniquet on the patient, you were kissing that limb goodbye. 
and we learn through the Iraqi war that no, they can they can survive a couple days with that tourniquet on. They did that in Iraq. They put the tourniquet on. They flew them to a base away from the, uh, where they were and repaired it. And they still had reperfusion of their of their limb. But here they they sort of we, we and we learned. We started in Korea, the Korean War, right? So we started learning some stuff. You ever watched the show called MASH? Yeah. You know, they flew the helicopter in and they did all that. That, 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 that was some part of the things that we learned. We, we actually learn a lot through war, unfortunately. All right? And then the other thing that we just learned through different, hey, how can we do this better? Right? You know, medicine itself sort of it advances and then we, we just keep learning. But that was probably, the picture there is probably one of the early ambulances, you know. And the other thing that, that you would see in emergency, actually, the show, is that the paramedic or the EMT, uh, in the early days, they didn't get into the back of the ambulance with them. Uh, the, the funeral home director or the person on the, working on the ambulance put them in the back and shut the door and drove to the hospital. There's nobody in the back actually taking care of the patient until this evolution took place. They realized pretty quick, okay, hey, we need to get, have someone back there to help that person control that bleeding, right? So they just, they did this and they just hauled butt to the hospital and hope you were okay. And then through the evolution, they, or BMS, they'd say, okay, we need somebody back there and then through more training and stuff. They, they get there, like back in, way back, I mean, I was five in 1966, so this was pretty, pretty unique. Uh, Test-wise, you might see the white paper stuff, right? And uh, so they started all these things, and I'll just read through a few of them because you, you, you can see this in your book, right? Every, everybody read chapter one, right? Well, class, good. So you're, everybody's read up. That's that's the system. You should read. You should have read the chapter before class that we plan on going over today. But basic life support. So CPR. Hey, we we should probably teach someone CPR, right? Before they start working on people. Advanced life support. You know, uh, the government got involved and they say, okay, this is the the design of the ambulance. This is the way that we want the ambulance to be designed. I think they're actually leaving this out of, don't quote me on it, because I'm, I'm grasping the information here, but the people who used to design the ambulance was the, uh, they, they had the initials KKK. Oh. Yeah, but it wasn't the KKK, it was these, this ambulance. They, they designed ambulances and, and equipment, and the, the government got involved in it and said, hey, we have to standardize this stuff so if you're an ambulance, then this is the way that we want the design, and then this is the way that we want, this is the material that we want on the ambulance. Right? Uh, they design, say, hey, everybody needs an ambulance. Every community should have an ambulance. So that's one of the things that they worked on. They got them on uh, frequencies where they could talk on the radios. It's very important. And then the pilot studies on, on all this, on anything new, they're going to run a pilot study. So on all this stuff, they, they run these studies and they do the study to see if it works and see if it doesn't work, right? Okay. And then uh, here's the study feasibility of a single nationwide telephone number for an ambulance, right? Or getting help, 911, everybody's familiar with that. So these are things that this this paper did, and and then it just progressed from there. Where we want what we want to happen is we want a continuum of care. So we want this care to continue from this person being in a car wreck to this person being, if needed, on the surgery operating table, right? Or at least in the where we end up is in the emergency department. So we want to take the care to them, provide care from 
the time of the accident or incident could be a heart attack or wreck, right? And we want to provide care all the way up to the point of where we turn them over to the emergency department and then they do their part, right? Emergency department does their part. That's why, I mean, it may not affect you as much, but if, if you want to, for a paramedic or EMT, if you want to really get under their skin, uh, call them an ambulance driver, right? I mean, that's like a taxi cab driver, come on. So if you want to get under their skin, call them an ambulance driver, because we'll look at you, it's like, you obviously haven't seen the back of an ambulance, you know? Because back of an ambulance for a paramedic, it's a mobile intensive care unit. We have vents and we have drugs and medications and all these different things as in an intensive care unit. But they still, a lot of elderly people still refer to you as an ambulance driver. And you look at them and go, ah, ignorance is bliss. <laughs> you know, so anyway, so let's look at these. In the 60s, they developed CPR, all right? This Highway Safety Act of 1966, when, I'll just let you in on something to show you that you, you forget this stuff or you never did really learn it very good to begin with. But when you see a dash like this, Highway Safety Act of 1966, and the little dash there, that means that I didn't know what that was, so I had to look it up and, and type it on here. So I, I didn't have to look in the book, right? So uh, they developed a national curriculum. We do ride on the highways, right? Mm -hmm. So Department of Transportation, right? And so they developed a national curriculum, and then they also had, they started developing other educational programs. In 73, this EMS System Act, they, they did system planning, okay? Implementation of a 911 system, the availability, but also the training, right? No use to throw a system out there uh, without the training and the availability. They wanted to do this so uh, everybody would have access. And then we get sort of up a little bit closer, okay, to the National Registry. Blueprint of the National Registry of EMTs we, that's the exam that you're going to take. It's the National Registry of EMTs. Everybody now takes the National Registry exam. We used, Texas used to have their own exam. They had a state exam that you, that you would take. It tested you over the basic knowledge and skills that an EMT should know. And it was a very good, t no one asked me, okay? We had a 100% pass rate at the state way back when they were doing the state exam. 100%, everybody passed. It wasn't that the test was so easy. It was that they tested you on knowledge and skills instead of test taking ability. Uh, so, me and the National Registry are not, we don't get along very well, but it's our testing uh, agency, right? It's the person we have to go through the test, so we work within their system, but in 93, they sort of developed this, uh, and it's good in a way because it does certify you at a national level, and so if you go to California uh, or some other great state, you know, if you lose your mind and go to Oklahoma, then you're registered still. Then you just have to get there, their registry, all right, uh, their state uh, certification. In 66, sort of a component where they said, okay, EMS in the future, we want them to be a greater part of this healthcare system that we have. Back in the day, we didn't get along. The doctors really didn't want this. It wasn't one of those things that everybody sort of jumped on board and said, yeah, let's, let's do this EMS system. The doctors saying, no, 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 no. They can't do that in the hospital. I mean, they can't do that in the middle of the field, right? They can't do these procedures. And so they were sort of against it. They're saying, you know, they're not trained to do this. They're not smart enough to do this. We're the doctors, we're the doctors, right? That's back in the day when the nurses wore the white uh, dresses, nurses dresses and wore the little funny hats, you know, and they were nurses and they didn't do too much either. 
so things have changed so we get this where we they understand that hey EMS is part of the, the greater good they're part of the system very important component of the system uh, and then 2000 back to this century we needed something to be more consistent in the training and education all right because what happens is is that you have all these different programs out there all these things they're teaching all this different EMS stuff okay? and it goes along with this uh, in 2005 they it, it was curriculum based so now we we teach a national curriculum all right we don't teach a protocol back in the day they taught a lot of protocol so let's say we're, they're down on the coast they're down in, in uh, Galveston and you have EMS on the coast which is a lot different than EMS in North Texas okay so you have these different things so you know back before this they were teaching okay these are our protocols so they would teach protocol instead of curriculum which had this sort of weird uh, disconnect because if let's say I took a class up here I wouldn't know what to do in Galveston you know uh, because they would teach me the North Texas way of doing it does that make sense yeah so these things made consistency in education and training so you look at that big old thick book that you have that's the national curriculum that's not of Texas that's everywhere so every EMT class should be pretty much teaching the same information right? now there's going to be different procedures you know we don't have to worry about jellyfish in, in Dallas right no jellyfish but there's different things that you have to learn but we want everything to be the, the, the same and this is what that does here is it sort of made national EMS standards and national curriculum which is a good thing all right you know uh, if you go up north the northwest and like the northeast there's there should be a related stuff to that area and some have more advanced things that they do but mostly on a the big picture everything is standardized Hey, we're, we're, we're looking at we want common scopes of practice okay reciprocity does anybody understand that word it, I can hardly say it but reciprocity it means that you can go from one state to the other and work if you take a, a class here you can go to California and work under reciprocity and you have to go through a procedure to get their state certification but you don't you you won't have to go back through another EMT class okay and that allows reciprocity without a, a common scope of practice you couldn't do that because they'd be teaching their own thing right so reciprocity couldn't take place because there's too many different people wanting to do their own thing national accreditation this is for at the at the paramedic schools used to anybody could start up a paramedic program and just teach paramedic program and do that I mean it takes a little bit of, of work to start up a program okay but anybody could do that now they've made it all accredited which makes it in really hard to have a paramedic program that's why I don't have one in Greenville where I teach okay because it's too hard to have a paramedic program before that it wasn't that hard but now with the accreditations they make it they make it difficult and then uh, you have to have the national certification as a prerequisite for your state certification so what you guys will do is you will get through this course test and skills and everything and then uh, take your national registry pass your national registry and then apply for your state certification if you work outside of a hospital you have to have your state certification I recommend that you go ahead and do it because the school district pays for it you might as well get it and we'll go into that 
when it's closer to the top. Okay. So the National Highway Transportation Safety, I think the Avian Association, so it's just a bunch of uh, government stuff, regulation policy, resources, human resources, transportation. They, they make hospitals what they are. They make different facilities, trauma facilities, right? There's more to go into that, but they it's, it's part of it. They deal with the communication. There's a lot of public information, education, medical direction. We'll get into in a little bit. We have to have a medical director to work in Edison without a license. You can't do anything without medical direction. And that's, that's for another day. Trauma systems and then they evaluate it. They wanted some oversight, all right? They get used to, in any form of medicine that you go into, okay? Get used to somebody looking into your business, all right? Overwatch, they watch what you do. You know, they develop a, a system, it's called QAQI, and they look at all of what you're doing, your paperwork, your patient care. They, they keep that, uh, keep you accountable. And uh, with, without it, then there's no accountability. People just do with what they want. But they want to make sure that you're giving good service, you're accountable, they want to look for improvement, correct, that, you're, that you are long lasting, Question 10, I know we're sort of flying through it, but that's just a lot of definitions. So we don't want to spend a lot of time on just things that you can look up and commit to memory for the, for the test. 911 has been around, I know, since you guys have been alive. Uh, what, what year were you born? 2001. Oh, geez. My watch, 1997. I've had mix since 97. Seven dollars at Albertsons. Mixing a lot of things. Okay. The, uh, anyway, I, you know, they had the 911. That's been that's been around for some time now. People really, unless you're just really super old, you don't even remember a time when there wasn't 911. I don't remember a time when there wasn't 911. Okay. Uh, the other thing is enhanced 911, and this has been around for a while as well. When you call 911, they know you're, where you're calling from. Now, here's here's an important thing: if the bluebell finally catches up to me and I clutch my chest and fall over, don't dial 911 from the, the phone there, because it comes up Horn High School. They don't know where you are. It just comes up Horn High School doesn't come up G103, right? So, uh, if you dial it from your cell phone, they won't really know either. So, be prepared to tell them, hey, I'm here. But, if you're at your house, your address comes up. Your information automatically comes up. Your, the phone number that you're calling from and your location automatically comes up. Now, they're working on some things for, for cell phones. And, and they have made very good advancements they really know in, a, in an area on how, how close to get to from a cell phone. Before, you dial a cell phone and who knows where it's coming up. They, they don't have your location, so they would have to ask your location, which is a problem if, you know, if, if the person drives off a bridge or something, right? A bridge I'm on the highway that's 200 miles long. Can't, I don't know where you're at. That's happened. Trust me, that's happened to, well, not to me, but I've been on the ambulance looking for people who drove, drove off the road and they're trying to lead us in on a cell phone and we can't uh, get to your location. They can find you pretty easy. The 911 center, so the dispatch center, uh, again, this is something that, I don't know, you know, you can work into emergency medical dispatcher. There's another short class to go with it, but uh, you could be an EMD, emergency medical dispatcher. And they do pay, I think they pay decent.
born. Everybody can remember that, right? It's not 9-11, born dash one is born, right? Okay. Uh, this public safety answering point is the dispatch center. So it goes to, so if you call 911 here, then it's going to the local dispatch center. All right, and so that would be the answering point, public answering point. It's funny in in Hunt County where I'm from, if I dial 911 in Greenville, and then if I need an ambulance, they transfer it to the dispatch center and uh, I think it's in Flower Mound now. It used to be in Dallas, but I think they moved it to Flower Mound. So our dispatch center is in Flower Mound. How far away is it? You know, hours. It's a distance. It's a long distance. Uh, so when in, in Greenville, if you're talking to an EMS dispatcher, you're, you're speaking to someone in Flower Mound. Um, yeah, but that's not the that's not the furthest. If uh, Again, I only know it's Greenville because that's where I'm from. If I, when I was on the helicopter, if I called the dispatch center, it was in Missouri. <laughs> it's in Missouri. I called in in Missouri. So if, let's say the hospital needs a helicopter. They call for dispatch for the helicopter. They're calling someone in Missouri. Right, so the dispatch center, we'll look at that when we get to that when we get to that chapter, but for the most part, it's you dial 911, you go to this place like this that you might be in between. Like if you're, if you're, if I'm going home down 30, I could be on the Rockwall County, Hunt County line. Uh, one ambulance could be five minutes away and the other one could be 25 minutes. It, ping, it pings the wrong yeah. dispatch center, so they may send the wrong ambulance. So the closer to that, uh, like where I live, there's a, the county line road is 2642. So 2642, but there's an ambulance in Royce City, which is five minutes away, 12 minutes away, five minutes. So a lot of times the crews are telling them, hey, Royce City is actually closer to this call because they don't know. They're just going off of satellite information, right? So, which, which tower that it pinged. And, but the people on the ground figure that problem out. They know the lay, the lay of the land a lot better. And then, of course, the FCC rules all this, right? All your dispatch, all your things that you say on the radio and uh, over the phone, the FCC controls that. Which, remember that... Uh, or you may not know, you may not be aware, but keep in mind that when you're speaking on the radio to the dispatch center or the hospital, you're on a recorded line. Even if you're speaking on a radio, you're being recorded. You're on a recorded line. So you have to sort of watch out what you're saying. I uh, this patient to Parkland, and uh, the patient was unconscious. We had it, everything under control. We were just sort of sit back. We've done all we could do, right? Everything was going good. And so we I, we noticed that there was like a grasshopper or a cricket on the backboard. So I started talking to my partner about the cricket and, and thing and, you know, probably made some inappropriate comments over public radio, right? Mm -hmm. But I thought I was talking on the intercom, right? Between the three of us partner in the pilot and we were talking about this backboard and the cricket that I won't go into but uh, when we got when we landed at Parkland they came out and said hey you know that you were on you were on the dispatch frequency you everybody in Dallas heard you oh my goodness. yeah so I was like wow that's interesting <laughs> but so you have to watch what you say one time that on the FCC thing, uh, we had a radio frequency, our med radio, the, the plumbers would, would uh, come over it. They would, their, their tower was stronger than ours, so their radio frequency would bleed over. It's a lot like when you're listening to the radio and you have another radio frequency bleed in, you know what I'm talking about? 
Okay? They did the same thing, but man, they were always cussing over the radio, the plumbers were. And we'd have patients, family up front, and the plumbers would start talking. And we have to reach down there and turn down the radio. You know, because they're, you know, the family's like looking at us like, really? Like, it's the plumbers. I have to go through the whole story. We finally got them off of a frequency. <laughs> I complained about them enough. Wait, so is your equipment like a laptop? Like an airplane thing? Yeah. They, every, they can pull up. Because it's a good question. So when the dispatch, and we'll get into this a little bit when we talk about communication, okay? When the dispatch center answers you, they time stamp it. Oh. So they say, receive your message at 1330. So it's time stamped. Everything is time stamped. So if they have to go back and find an incident, then they know if that thing happened at 1.30, they know where to look on the, on the digital recording. Uh, unfortunately, I've had that pull up on me. They, they said, did you say this to dispatch? And like, well, I don't know. That was, you know, some time ago, knowing full well that I said that. But uh, they said, well, here's the recording. Like, I guess I did say that to dispatch, <laughs> you know. So it's 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 recorded. We have this new thing now. It's not new by any means. Uh, I, I say that just because I'm old. It seems new, but it, it's not really this voice over internet uh, protocol, which means the calls that you can make over the the, the web, right? Okay, you can make that does provide a little bit of a problem. Uh, you need to be able to give them your physical address. Dispatch center. What is there an app that does that now? Where you can do that, or is it some a service that you have to buy? Uh, if, if our server goes down, their phones go out. So I think that's the way it is. We talk over the. The yeah, I don't know. Phone rings, I pick it up. Okay. So we have, we'll, we'll do this and we'll take a break, okay? It's about that time. So we have a variety of different systems existing, okay? This is what I part of. This is what you're familiar with. So when you call 911, a fireman comes out to your house, okay? Uh, along with the fire department, right? A city run service. Okay, uh, the only one I can think of off the top of my head is uh, Paris, Texas. They have a municipal service, uh, a third city service. They're not firemen. They're not part of a fire department, but they're a municipal service where they, uh, the city operates the EMS. Then you have a private EMS. That's where I grew up in, okay, working for Hunt County EMS. They're private. They, they're owned by American Medical Response now. They've been bought out several times, but the mother company is AMR, right? CareFlight. You guys have seen the CareFlight ambulances come in, correct? Yeah. Private ambulance service. It's just a private ambulance service that provides 911, all right? And then you have I mean, it's a for-profit company. So, I mean, it's just a private service. They're, they're very popular. Arlington, I mean, they're in big cities. Arlington is a private company. AMR runs the EMS in Arlington. MedStar, Fort Worth. You know, I think they're still private. So, uh, I'm not sure who actually owns them. Well, wait, so do you call the service, or? No, you call 911. And okay. they have a they have a dispatch center. It, it's the same process as any other. All these are the same process as far as getting an ambulance to your house. Okay. okay? You still call nine one one. Still do all that. It's just private. It's not a fire department and municipal EMS is tax based. So that's how they make their money. Private ambulance service they charge. Or, you know, like in Greenville and Hunt, Hunt County, they, uh, the county pays a, a fee, pays 
AMR, uh, uh, through like a, a big, huge dike thing, to have the ambulances there. So there's a lot of private ambulance services around that do 911 area. A lot more than you think. A hospital-based EMS, the one I can think about off the top of my head is so was hospital-based. Amarillo Medical Services, they were they were owned by the hospital. And then you get a sort of a combination between the fire and law enforcement, uh, DFWs did. Faith, y'all y'all familiar with Faith? They're they're triple certified. They're law enforcement, EMS, and fire. And so it's DFW. So those guys have a unique thing. Oh, the other day you might be on the ambulance. So one day you're arresting people, the other day you're taking care of them. Me, I get sort of mixed up. You know, what am I supposed to do? Stick you with a needle or shoot you? I don't know. What, what do we do here, right? But those who are different, it, it is strange because I grew up in this hospital-based EMS, and I only knew one EMS system. I'm glad they put this in here because I only knew one way, and that was the hospital-based type system. When I moved down here, or I came down here looking for employment on the ambulance, I had never even heard of a private ambulance service, really. During, especially during EMS, like on the emergency part. So I had to get sort of used to that. The other thing private ambulance services do uh, is they do hospital hospital transports. So they may pick up a patient from one hospital and take them to another. They may pick them up and take them to the uh, back to the nursing home. Uh, that's just something that they do. Uh, they do it. It's just a transfer service. Let me think of. Do you guys remember seeing those red ambulances? Uh, it's like Sacred Heart. I think that was it in the ER. They're a private ambulance service. All they do, they don't do a 911 system. They just do inner facility transports. It's what they do. Okay. Let's take a break.